Newton's second law, it's mass effect lab. If when you let go of your past car, it rolls, that means you have to adjust your track. There are feet on the bottom. Whether you have these types of end stops or these, you'll have to adjust them. The end stops are now adjusted. The car doesn't move and I'm ready to begin the lab. Set the icon on the motion sensor to cart, not person. Flip the motion sensor so that it is perpendicular to the track. You will now notice that you will have the green triangle illuminated in your lab. If this is not the case, unplug the USB cord, plug it into a different location on your computer. You should see the green light on the power link telling you that you're ready to go. Take a paper clip and bend it so that it looks like a fish hook. Close one end so that the string will not come loose. Thread the string through the hole in the end of the end stop on the PASCO track. Tie the other side of the string to your pass car. If you tie it in a loop, it will be easier to remove it at the end of the lab. The eLab instructs us to place 20 grams on my hook to get the mass in grams, convert it to kilograms. We're also to put two 20 gram masses on our pass car. We would also put the pass car on the scale. The best way to do this is to put the car upside down so that it doesn't roll off, put the masses on top get the correct mass in grams, convert it to kilograms, and the lab is bet ready to begin. In the first half of the lab we are altering the force or what's accelerating the car. I'm going to move the 20 grams to the end. I start with 20 grams at the paper clip, then 40, and then 60. The uh, motion sensor will work best if you are approximately 15 centimeters away from the sensor to get a reading. I'm going to start Data Studio by clicking on the timer. I'm going to let go of the car. I would have my lab partner catch the car on the other end for me. I am doing this by myself so I'll have no one catching it. The reason I didn't move was because the motion sensor would have picked up my movement instead of the car. So the person releasing the car must remain still. Just let your index finger release the car. You'll have a lab partner at the other end to catch it for you. All will go well down there. Okay, here's where my data is. I go to Summary. I click on Summary. I can open and close this easily with a click. On my very first run of data, in order to have it show up in real time, I need to drop and drag that data and throw it on the graph. Subsequent runs will show up automatically for me. I can go to Data and select No Data if I wish to do a new run or if I want to look at a different run. Run 1, once I have done that for the initial time, you can pull them off of this data button. Otherwise, there's nothing there. Uh, we've spoken before about the fact that you can rename these runs by double-clicking on them. This box would open up. I would rename mine. I would probably call mine 20 grams for the 20 gram run. If I click on OK, it'll ask me if I would like to change the name. You bet. I'm going to rename that. If I do this throughout the lab, I'll be able to know which data I should keep and which should be discarded. That was a really good run. Here's a good data run in Data Studio for the 20 gram mass. 
In the summary section, I have relabeled each of the components of my lab for the data that I wish to keep. We have discussed this in previous labs that all I need to do is click on an item, open it up, the box will allow me to rename it. You can name it whatever you like. The convention I chose to use was 20 gram, 40 gram, 60 gram. The second part of the lab asks for empty cart, cart plus 250, cart plus 500. I have two complete sets of data just for teacher purposes. Once we have data, we want to get the slope of our velocity time graph. We're going to select the SMART tool as we have previously in other labs. Move the SMART tool down to the bottom portion of your expression. Pull on the corner. I now see that I can do rise over run 0.78 divided by 1.5017 that would give me the slope for this particular velocity time graph. The lab continues by having you remove 20 grams from the PASCAR, attach that to the paper clip. Once you've attached it to the paper clip, you will reweigh or gain the mass of the paper clip and the brass masses. Get a new mass for the PASCAR. The third trial will have you remove the remaining 20 gram mass, attach it to the paper clip, reweigh this, also reweigh the car. At this point in the lab, we're going to use a constant force to accelerate our pass car. Take this bat, brass mass, place it on the scale, hook and hanger, find out what it is. It will remain the same for the extension of the lab. Take your pass car, put it on the scale, find out what its mass is. Run trial one exactly as you did. Each of the others, let go of the car, catch it before it reaches the end of the track. The next trial that we will do, you'll add this PASCAR mass. It says 250 grams. We're not going to be able to trust that. We're going to ask you to put the PASCAR on the triple beam balance, put the 250 gram bar, find out what the combined mass is. That will be your second trial. The third run that we're going to do for this endeavor will be placing two bars into the car. We will need to know the mass or combined total of this. Again, place the car on the scale. Put the masses on the upside down car. I now have 500 grams plus whatever the car is worth. Our scale only goes to 610. There is a way to accommodate that. We're going to use these that are filled with BBs. There are two numbers on there. I notice that it says 500 grams or there's an actual number of 147.5. 147.5 grams would be if you placed it on the scale. It's worth 500 grams if I place it on the end of my triple beam balance. This provides a torque which allows the scale to go to a higher reading. Now you would read this as whatever you read on the sliders as you move these back and forth to accommodate the load, plus remember to add to it 500 grams. 